Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to Conch Shell Productions August 2023 Artist Chat. My name is Magali Colleyman Christopher. I am the founder and artistic director of Conch Shell Productions. And this month, I am absolutely thrilled because I'm co hosting, yes, co hosting our Artist Chat today with Mayela Cancel, founder and blogger of Kaukama. Now, if you've never heard of Kaukama, well, you better go find out about it. It's an amazing platform where there are articles and podcasts and, and video conversations with Mayela Cancel, who's co-hosting with me, where she shares Caribbean narratives. Kaukama is a French and English podcast and blog that features articles that represents cinema and television in the Caribbean. So of course, I would invite Mayela to be a co-host with me. Welcome, Mayela. Hi, thank you, Magali, for having me to co-host this um, conversation. Thank you, thank you. So we're gonna have this great, awesome conversation with Alain Bida, right? This yes. amazing gentleman right here. Mayela, would you, I would love for you to introduce him to our audience. Yes, of course. So Alain Bida, or Alain Bida, for the English speakers, is an award-winning animation film producer and director from the French island of Martinique in the Caribbean. During the two past decades, he has produced and directed animated features and short films, animated series, documentaries, and live action films, which won more than 200 awards and 400 nominations in festivals worldwide. Okay, now in 2015, Alain made history in releasing the first animated feature film ever made in Martinique, Battle Dream Chronicles, which was awarded 24 awards and 70 nominations worldwide. Then in 2018, he created the first Caribbean animated television series for the pilot, which won 25 awards and 115 nominations worldwide. Are you hearing the numbers here, people? Yes. <laughs> so you... <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm not even sure there are other French directors that had so many awards and nominations. And in just two films. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in March um in March 2022, Alain Dubert was invited by the Carnegie Hall for the Afrofuturism Festival in New York for a showcase of his works. In May 2022, Alain Bida was chosen by Her Royal Majesty Queen Angelique Monet of Haiti Oni to receive the Best Animation Film Award in, in the Artisan Festival International World Peace Initiative, Alfi in Cannes. I'm just snapping. Snapping, snapping. Yeah. Now, he deserves as it. for now, yeah, 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 yeah. As for now, yeah. Alain <laughs> is the only Caribbean animation film director who won that many awards and recognition. In December 2021, Alain released his second animated feature film, Opal. This Afro fantasy tale was premiered at the Anime Carib Animation Festival in Trinidad, and it has won get ready 160 awards and 220 nominations in festivals worldwide snap 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 <laughs> snap snap, snap, snap. <laughs> did you hear those numbers i told you the numbers are going to be adding up welcome yes. Alain. welcome thank you for having me hi hi magali hi Mela. hi everybody <laughs> and thank you for having me and uh, i'm really really happy to be back and uh, <laughs> Thank you. So we're going oh, he's to saying he's back. Yeah. Let's yeah, tell them why he's yeah. saying he's back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, we're like tripping over each other. Why is he saying that he's back, Mayala? He's back because he was a part of uh, the first Conchal Shell International Film Festival. And I mean, every time there's a festival with the Conchal with Conchal Productions, uh, we get to screen his films. So, yeah. 
So that's why he's back because I try to talk about him every time that I can. So you get the sense that Conchal Productions is a bit of a fan of Ellen's work. A little, just a little. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> so we're going to dive right in because today's topic is creating against all odds. And I feel like Alain Bidaf really um is really the definition or an example of what it means to be a true artist dedicated to one's craft. Um, what I like about his films is, first of all, of course, it's about Martinique and it's about uh, the Afro-Caribbean culture, but I really love how he has strong female leads. And as an Afro-Caribbean woman that who grew up who mm, grew up in the 90s, in the 2000s, I never felt represented in a positive way. And when I watched his film, Battle of the Chronicle, for the first time, I was really impressed. And then I watched uh, Opa, and again, we have a strong lead. And it's even better because it's a little girl. And so that's why I wanted to ask you, Alain, how do you come up? with these characters, these female characters that are so strong and yet so vulnerable? I am surrounded. I, I grew up with this, uh, this archetype of uh, woman in Martinique. So that, that's what I'm more, um, what, that's what's more natural for me to represent. That's the way I, I see uh, um, uh, womanhood. Uh, and, um, Generally, in in um, what I what I learn um, during my studies is that um, it was interesting to include women elements in the story because uh, that was creating a more uh, in 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 pre in predictability in predictability because um, male are more predictable because there's a little bit more. Flat, flat. Uh, but woman is much more multidimensional. So, but that was for um, from um, from a mainstream mindset. Uh, in Martinique, uh, there is this. It's really different because it's really it's almost uh, matriarchal uh, in 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 the in the way um, we are connecting in 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 the family. Uh, the mother is stronger, uh, and when when you grow up in, in 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 this, you don't really. It's it's not really strange. But when I I went in Europe and United States, uh, I was really really shocked by the fact that uh, men are really central in the family. Um, that's really not something I've seen a lot uh, here, and uh, but at the same time. Um, there is uh, this uh, archetype of the femme jock um, that is a really the, the, the strong woman, the strong uh, Martinican or Guadeloupean or, or, or Guyanese woman. And um, but what is the, the femme what? Say it again. Um, oh. Femme jock. And I was oh. saying to say, see, that's one difference between Guadeloupe and Martinique. In Guadeloupe, we would say the femme potomitan. We don't say in Martinique too, I... but there's yeah. But there's... you would use the pump jack more, but I think we use from potomito more in Guadeloupe. Yeah, so do we. Yeah. I think you know, in the Haitian culture, we say potomito. That means the yes. the strength of the family, the 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 po the the the, the, the pole Fire. that holds the house, the pillar that holds mm -hmm. the family together. That's cool. Exactly. I love that. I love that. But I'm sorry at the same time, you. at the same time. Um, she, the, the, the woman um, in the Caribbean, they become strong because there is a problem in the society. Uh, they had to become strong. And we see the difference between um, the Caribbean and the rest of the world, and especially the continent, when, uh, the, when the woman express a stronger, a, a more fragile femininity compared to the Caribbean. And it's because we have a lot of problem in the society. Uh, we are forcing those women to become strong because we are actually putting them in a battlefield. And uh, so a lot of people choose to not express their vulnerability and they see this as a weakness. And uh, mm -hmm. that was what I wanted to, to show that 
um, behind the, this 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 um, this 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 status of, of strong woman that is celebrated, there is somebody who is suffering a lot, and uh, uh, we can also improve the environment. We have something to do to also give back to this strong woman uh, something a little bit better in the future that allow her to be more herself and not always a warrior. So do you feel that this is a Caribbean diaspora, a Martinican specific, or an African diaspora dynamic, or an, a people of the African heritage dynamic? Would you say it's more macro or micro? I think it's for for for, for now it's it's uh, it's uh, the the Afro the Afro Caribbean diaspora, but uh, we're going to meet that in some other place in the rest of the world. I believe that uh, the more the more the more women grow up with um, struggles, and the more they are going to strengthen. Um, and uh, maybe in the future we're going to see this maybe more because. Um, uh, with um, the movement, the, the feminist movement that we we have now, things are polarizing much more than before. So we may see some um, of that uh, in in the, the in Europe and uh, North North America too. Um, mm -hmm. but, with, with... Mm -hmm. but I I think to me, it's more about um territories uh, that were colonized mm. and uh and the fact that black womanhood had to be denied had to be erased um for slavery to happen for colonization to happen and you often have the opposition between uh, black womanhood and white womanhood uh with white women presented as the essence of what being a woman is and black women not being seen as just women. Yep. That, that's a double vision that black women have to navigate right now. But like Alan said, uh, like Alan said, uh, we are really fighting this vision right now. And his films to me are um, a proof that artists also are aware of what's going on and are trying to change people's mindset about all these issues, all these social issues. And 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 I'd like to piggyback on that with a question about cultural storytelling versus storytelling for profit. So would you define, if you had to put a label on yourself which many of us don't. So feel free to tell me, I don't want to put a label on myself. Where do you feel that your work lives on a spectrum of cultural storytelling or storytelling for profit? And what I mean by that is I'm often told that the work that I write is too niche, not commercial enough. So storytelling for profit would be commercial and niche and, and art for social change is considered you know, story, cultural storytelling. Tell us a bit about your thoughts on where you live on that spectrum. And also, you know, a bit about your production company and your business model overall and 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 how you find you found financial backers to support your mission if you feel that you live in the middle or where based on the where you live on that spectrum. That's a that's a big question. Should I should I take it in pieces? <laughs> well, for, for the... If 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 we go to the reason why I make film, um, it's really tied to what I found when I got back in Martinique in two thousand one. Um, when I came to Martinique, it was tem it was temporary uh, because I wanted to go to the United States to 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 pursue my my career there, uh, and um, but I. I knew I would stay in Martinique for a while, so I decided to to create a company to create animation. 
but the problem is that uh, was that um, um, unlike the United States, where uh, there is a pipeline, uh, a proper pipeline for animation, so the the hiring the experts that they want. So they want an animator, they want a reader, they want a modeler. So they they generally going to pick um, this person who have a specific expertise. Um, in Martinique, they didn't know. They didn't know this industry, so they just knew that they had a, they had an idea for a, for a story, and they knew the final shape of uh, the animation film. But in between, nobody knew exactly. So um, everybody asked me, "Can you give the end product?" This is this is all they were interested into, and um, so that 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 forced me to 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 go into this direction. And most of my clients were um, um, non-profit organization or. Um, association that wanted to protect people my first my first mm -hmm. short film was a, was about aids i worked on the agoraphobia uh, on the the poverty the suicide um so i had a lot of a lot of clients that wanted to 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 create a social film and um, they came to me because i was making animation and animation can can impact uh, kids and uh, mm. the problem with live action is that live action was really impacting um, teenagers and adult people but the children not that much so they saw an opportunity to expand their audience and um, that's what allowed me to grow in Martinique so my I, I stayed with this um, I, I start liking the fact that animation could impact people's life and solve not solve but bring a little bit of light uh for pro problems that we have in in society and I, I kept going into this this direction um so my my i have um i have a i have two companies i have a um a commercial com company to sell my film and uh, i have uh, a non-profit organization too to, to develop those films. And um, it was, uh, both were created with this mindset that we're going to try to use animation to, 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 to bring some light to some, some problems that we have and pro problems that we never really talk about. There are some issues like um, alcohol, uh, AIDS, or all the things that we're going to see a lot, but there are some other topics that um, really are really too niche for for being shown. And um, so I, I base myself on that. It's not the the most um, profitable way, <laughs> uh, but uh, more and more um, I can compensate with uh, uh, the art and uh, the en en ent entertainment value. To, to compensate for uh, this subject being niche. So getting back to the topic of our conversation, creating against all odds, Opal, how were you able to get funding for this project that has been recognized internationally for its amazing merits? What was the, the, the funding structure for that? Was that from the nonprofit model, or is it from your commercial model? It's much more. Of, uh, it's a bit of both, but um, so it, it's it's a lot uh, of uh, self funding and uh, a little bit of public public funding through the nonprofit through the nonprofit organization. Um, so it, it's much more like that because um, I. I start looking for funding uh, for my first feature film in 2007, 2008. And um, it was told to me that um, they will not fund this type of film because they don't believe that a Martinican can do that. So it was not even Alain Vidar that was uh, targeted. It was really, it cannot happen in the island. That's not uh, our 
our path, our direction. So I knew that, well, uh, it, it's not um, it's not what they it's not where they want to go. The people who are funding film in Martinique, at least, uh, they change um, they change re regularly, and uh, sometimes they have um, a clear path, and sometimes they are a little bit lost. And uh, for now, I don't really know where they want to go. I don't really. They, they, they don't have. I see that there are some films that are funded, but uh, compared to what they could do, uh, I think that uh, it could be better. I don't exactly know what type of film they want, uh, because um, there are a lot of directors in Martinique that say that they have really grassroots cultural thing happening in Martinique in their film, and it's not pushing them to fund those films. So I don't know exactly what they want. I see that. Um, Topic, crimi topic criminal is funded, so I guess that. Uh, Say it again. It's what? It's, say it again. Uh, uh, a TV series called uh, Tropic, Tropic Criminal. Uh, I was and, an article uh, about it. Yeah. And, I, uh, I wrote it, a review. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. Is you're going to have to send is... me that link so, so I can share it so that people can see your viewpoint about it. So there's no 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 problem with that, but at the, um, but at least that the, the 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 film from the country get get funded that 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 would be good. But I don't exactly know. At least, uh, for example, uh, with the CNC. Uh, um, what is the CNC? The, 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 what is the CNC? The CNC is uh, the center, the, the national, national center, center of, uh, of cinema. cinematography in France. So it's government it's, funding. It's, yeah, is it's government film, funding. The big film commission, and uh, they really for for every um, for every grant they have uh, a clear um, a clear uh, a mission statement. So they are going to fund this type of projects they are looking for this type of mindset but in martinique we have no clear uh, uh, map uh, for that so it's complicated to know exactly what they want i i would just add something about the lack of vision for the for our industry our cinema industry I would say that the films or the projects that get the funding are those that are are those that reflect the vision that France has for the Caribbean. Mm. So mm. It, they that's why there's the money. The money is there. There are films and TV series that get uh, the green light. But they're not the ones that would represent us in a um, multi-dimensional way. Because and that's why I created Ciao Kerama. Exactly. And without being too well, I don't want to go into <laughs> conspiracy thing, but uh <laughs> France has a very let's say a very clever way to to censor. So, uh, and the censorship is happening at the funding step. Um, so uh, they want to see a certain, they want to represent black people in a certain way uh, in cinema and television. And this way didn't really evolve, sadly. And uh, they are not going to fund anything else. And because the system in itself, uh, beyond uh, all those problems, the system in itself is really good. Everybody tend to gravitate around this system, and everything is public. So even this um, independent private industry in France is really weak compared to a country like uh, United States or Canada. So um, I don't think it's if if it's going to change a lot. Um, I saw mm -hmm. that uh, in the mainstream industry there was a lot of complaint about. Um, the CNC not represent not wanting to fund uh, 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 genre film 
uh, and they complained for 30 years. And I saw that in 2018, I think they created the special commission for horror film and, and fantasy and, and uh, fantastic film. So maybe it's going to evolve one day because, but I'm not sure. They, they have a commission for, uh, I think it's called the Commission for the Diversity uh, that is supposed to fund film, diverse film, but well, it's not, uh, there's, there's still work to do <laughs> for them to, to be a little so bit more. So it sounds like you're creating uh, against all odds from a fiscal standpoint, as well as trying to tell stories that are not traditionally recognized as uh, Moncton stories. So uh, from a content viewpoint, as well as from a fiscal viewpoint, are you finding that international um, financiers are approaching you individual independent financiers or are you still reliant upon the cnc's funding on the most part the cnc i give up for um, for a long time i give up the cnc for a long time because it's not going to get anywhere um in the rest of the world you you really have to be in the place to 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 take advantage of all the type of of funding but they are much more open, yes. Uh, even the place, even some places that 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 are recognized uh, as being uh, ra racist, they're going to be more open that, than than France. So, uh, but you have to go in the place. You have to really um, the the ideal is to create a company um, in this place in 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 the nationality of the funding that you want and. Uh, it's going to be easier than getting it in 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 in, in France, which is uh, sad. But mm. uh, well. <laughs> so, but you. But that's why well, it's, I got used to it. So. That that's why it's it would be great if we get to connect to other Caribbean countries because filmmakers in other Caribbean countries are in the same situation. So, yeah. if we get other governments to found projects in the Caribbean, that would be great also. But how that do you stay motivated? Too, yeah. Yeah. How do you stay motivated? Isn't it tiring, exhausting to do all that? Um, let's say that once you start, uh, there is a moment when you ask yourself, did I do the good thing? Um, <laughs> so there, there's this stage, uh, and I had this 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 stage, especially uh, this stage happened because I'm I'm kind of stubborn, and this place this this stage happened um, when I when I made my first feature film, I lost the first version because the the, the drive died. It was in 2010, and um, I lost 50 minutes. Of film, so I lost the film and I lost uh, the work files because uh, the two drive I bought two drive that were in uh, well they were in, a, in 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 a configuration called Red One, and um, the problem was that the drive they were new, uh, but there was yeah. a there was a defect from the factory, and it killed the drive, and uh, I just got back ten percent of everything. And from that, I spend one or two months to ask myself, do I mm. keep going? Do I continue mm. to sign or whatever? And I decide to keep going. I did too much. And I, I, I already went too far to go back. And um, there, there, there was no other way. There was no other alternative. Uh, wow. And, and the, the other motivation of course, it's the injustice and everything that is happening. Um, we are, I feel like, um, I don't feel like we are evolving. I feel like every time that we are putting one step forward, there are two steps uh, backward, we are talking about things that were acquired 30, 40 years ago. And I see that we are going back in time, like if, uh, we're not evolving and uh, I feel that um, having a voice uh, through, uh, through, through, through cinema, through film, 
to animation, this is necessary. Um, and uh, for example, um, especially for Opal, for example, uh, I, I, I made a, a, a short version of Opal in 2005, and um, because uh, it was the, the, the um, it was a trial of Utro, uh, and what is uh, that trial of Utro? What does that mean? It, it was a trial in in, in France uh, where um, there was a lot of kid that said that the parents abused them but finally it was find out that it was not true we don't know exactly if it was not true but well uh there was a it, it really shocked friends and that was at this moment that i studied um all of that um, the legislation around incest and i realized that oh incest is legal in france it's only forbidden uh, under 18 um, and the thing is that uh, so it's like alcohol it's like uh, a driving license and I feel I felt like okay <laughs> that, that's not that's not good uh, so I wanted to say something about it and um, that that's that's where it, it that's where it started and um, as I, I like to study psychological thing uh, I wanted to know what was happening in in the brain of somebody who was a victim to explain to other people too why people were doing what they do because a lot of people don't understand why people take so much time to to file a complaint um while people uh, forget because they think mm. that they, it's not possible or that, that people is they forget because they lie uh, so uh, it was interesting to to bring all this element to bring this to everybody for them to understand that uh, we are all human and that it's, no, it's not like, it's just that the brain functions in, in a certain way and uh, that we're not aware of that and we think that we know that. And I feel that's, you really did that in a really powerful um, way that allowed me as an audience member to ask myself a question of what I don't remember, right? And why don't I remember about my childhood? And I really appreciated how you 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 created this story that allowed us all to take a look at ourselves, which is the ultimate for art for social change. It's a it's poetic. Uh, I mean, I feel like Martinican creators have a poetic approach to their storytelling that is not necessarily the same as the approach of storytelling by Guadeloupian uh, creators. There's Now I'm starting to see the difference uh, because Alain is very, is very poetic when it comes to sensitive issues. And I feel like for now, the Guadeloupian filmmakers, uh, Guadeloupian writers that I that I come across so far are much straightforward and much much more frontal. This you mean more literal as opposed to metaphoric? Yes, yes, yes. And, and I think it's great that we get to see a difference in both islands. That's yes, that's that's true. That that's something that I I I, I can perceive too. Um, uh, Martinican being more, much more, much more poetic, much more dreamers, uh, and and Guadeloupe being much more up upfront. Uh, they they confront more. Um, what I see too beyond that, I also I also can notice. Um, I notice that um, Martinique people, yes, they are poetic and they are dreamers, but at the same time, I don't think if we are the best for sailing. <laughs> I, I, I think that Guadeloupe is much better in the commercial part. Uh, they, they have this sense, this innate sense for for sailing. For, uh, I think that uh, um, in the future, that would be good if, if we had much much more um, uh, collaboration because I think that we complete each other really well. Because um, in Martinique, no, we don't have the, this 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 sense uh, 
this this mastery the commercial mastery that Guadeloupe had uh, we don't have it and um, that 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 is missing because we can express what we feel but we 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 rarely can sell it well and uh, it's the contrary for Guadeloupe is more upfront but they know how to sell I want to focus on Opal. You've screened and won over 150 film awards. How did you do that? Would you say that, that, that you were focused on submitting your most successful with the niche film festivals? Because you're we are, I'm always researching. What film festival is the wisest film festival for me to submit my work to? Where is my money going to get the most bang? Right? Have you submitted primarily to French language film festivals, or do you submit to film festivals of any language? And how does that work? And were you able to get financiers interested in you by submitting to so many film festivals? The, the, the first thing that I'm I'm going to do <clears throat> for for feature film is. Um, to, to set a budget for festival. So it's generally for Opal, it was 3,000 euro. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm going to eat the, the top tier first, not all of them because they're expensive, but uh, what I feel can work, knowing that it's probably not gonna work <laughs> and I'm probably not going to be selected, but uh, it's it's like can you you even if you know that you're not going to be selected you have to try you have to send and that's that that's 100 that you lost but anyway if it if it work that's great <laughs> because that can save you for a lot of uh, problem later. And what does that mean the... to save you from a lot of problem later? What does that mean? Because the more uh, the festivals they are classified they are the top tiers there's the 10 biggest they are the second tier uh and there are the, the third tier the rest um the more the when you get an award in in in, in the first uh tier and the, the top tier you really one award is like having 100 award in in the the the, the second tier and uh, so they are more important they're more recognized by the industry the distributors that they, they cannot go in every festival so they they're going to choose and what they're going to choose first are the top tier festivals so there is a better chance even if even if um you don't uh, win in the top tier you you have a better chance to meet a distributor a, di a distributor that is going to be interested um so it's generally what we try first but the but everybody try the top tier so there's a lot of competition uh generally your film is competing against um between uh three and and five or six thousand films so it, it's really it's really um chances are not big when when it's happened it's really changed your life but uh, the chance is not big and um the second tier is already better but um but here is the matter of chance too and the third tier if you have a good film the third tier you can collect enough awards there but there's no with festival you never know if you're going to be selected and you never know if you're going to win because every festival has their agenda if, even when you try to make sense of where do i send who's going to select me you try and you see that it doesn't work um it's really a matter of um you you are there at the right place at the right time with the festival with this this agenda so it, there's a there's a big part of luck um and uh so i'm really grateful for what for what's happening i never envisioned this i i really told myself that if i could um win 50 awards that was great uh i would never imagine that because for me it was not possible i never saw any other director uh making this number i didn't think it was possible so I get it. I'm really happy. <laughs> but, uh, 
it's difficult to plan. I don't know okay. if uh, now I'm going to see with my next film if um, if that's something you can plan up. If, if there's a recipe in quality of film or subject or impact that can replicate that. I don't know, but uh, there's there's a part of of luck. But uh, in the strategy, uh, yes, you 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 go to the top tier, the second tier, and uh, the third tier it depends. There are a lot of festivals are really they 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 have a they have a theme, they have a direction, they want to see this type of films. So uh, um, in in term of um, going to the festival, because that is important too. There is the selection but going there even if you don't meet distributors um there's really good connection to be done and uh, it's really nice to meet other filmmaker and even the people in in the, the who organize the, the festivals much most of the time they are filmmakers too and producers and uh, uh, that's uh, that allow you to build your network so it's really interesting there's no to me, there's no small festivals. Uh, there are big ones, yes, but uh, even the, the smallest festival, there are something really nice that can come from it. And um, so that's that's it. And the, 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 the first reason uh, why I'm going to really eat the festival like that, because I'm I really de- decide I'm going to use this budget and I'm going to, to submit everywhere. Uh, it's because mine. I don't have a bankable name. I'm not famous. Uh, I don't have famous actors. Yes. So I need to create a profile uh, for the film that is uh, that will attract people and that is giving them this this certainty that when it's shown in festivals, it attracts people. Festival recognize that that's a film they want to they they was they want to show. Um, uh, <clears throat> there's there's the awards and the nomination, but there's also the, the the opening and the closing ceremony, because uh, when a festival decide to put your film in uh, opening or closing, it's really that they really because. Um, all the officials are going to be there, so they need to select something that is uh, good. So that that is giving you and that give to other people who are going to see that uh, um, a certain value to the film. So that the the festival tour is really this important part uh, when the film is going to spread its wing and and start living, start uh, connecting with. The audience. Um, did Opa win awards in France? Um, some some awards, some not that much. Um, nothing that I remember that is really. I think yes, I, I just... but not not like Battle Room Chronicle. Battle Room Chronicle had a had a better impact in France that. Opal. Um, Most of the festival that gave a, that gave award to Battle Chronicle, they didn't give an award to Opal. I don't know why, uh, but uh, well, there was there, there was not what they were looking for at this time. Uh, but um, from memory, no, no, no. There, there was no. There's probably one or, or more awards but not not like the rest of the world and so i love how you 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 shared your journey with festival submissions and taking your film to a festival cuz i totally agree that it is about the community that you you become acquainted with if once you get selected to have your film screened and and and, and this is really i i'm hoping that all the filmmakers, the emerging filmmakers out there watching this interview will think, oh, okay, then I should be going to the film festivals if my film gets selected. I should be submitting my films to these film festivals. You submitted your films to international film festivals. Does that mean that you put subtitles in all these languages or were your subtitle, were all your submissions with French subtitles? 
Yes, there's a big uh, preparation before sending to festival. So I put, uh, I create a subtitle um, in, uh, for Opal, it was in 33 languages. Uh, I tried to cover. <laughs> Languages. No wonder you. Not in three languages. Yes. Um, and Opal is in English, but the original yes, version yes. is in English. It's not. Yes. French. The, the oh, first, okay. Yes. The first version of That's Opal true. is in, in English because um, after Battle Rim Chronicle, I realized that uh, French was uh, the French language was uh, blocking the distribution of the film. Because that that gives to the that that when if if French supports the film that's great that it's it's in in French, but if they don't support it, uh, that's a problem because that prevents the film from being uh, uh, di distributed properly. I had people who told me I had a lot of people who told me I would buy your film. Uh, speaking of Battle in Chronicle. But it, it's in French, so it must be in, in English first. And um, when, I, when I started to, to create my first short in English, I saw the difference, uh, the reception, and uh, I decided to keep going with that. And Opal was, was made in, in English. Uh, but I, 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 I still, I still uh, put a lot of subtitle. Uh, the, the first one being... Um, uh, the English subtitle, because uh, of course, um, even if it's in English, it's needed for most of the festival. Um, Spanish, because uh, the Spanish um, the, 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 the Spanish film industry is also huge, and they are, they are really welcoming uh, Italian por Portuguese because. Brazil is uh, it's it's there's really not a lot of country that speak Portuguese, but they are huge, <laughs> so there yeah. is a lot of possibilities. Yeah, uh, Italian because it Italy is a country that is really artistically intense in uh, how many festivals they always have a festival. They love art, and uh, so there's a nice connection with them. And the rest is um, the rest of Europe, uh, some in Africa. Some in some some um, Asia, Asian countries, yes, uh, Thailand, China, Japan, um, South Korea, uh, to to New Zealand. Mm. And, uh, so when you have all of this ready, uh, that gives best the that that gives the film a better chance to be accepted. Mm. That makes sense. So English. Spanish, English, Spanish, Portuguese, Portuguese Italian, it, Italian, uh, uh, French too. But French is looking for a very specific type of French, like uh, French, like quality, but French, like something more. I don't know. Uh, French is black. looking for. Excuse me. I said they want something less black. Because yes, that, that's black. And I think that's, <laughs> that's the reason that Opal didn't get to to have the same recognition in wow. France than Battle Dream Chronicle. Because since Battle Dream Chronicle already had it, there's no need for another one. Yeah. Like he would and have I... other filmmakers that will get a lot, a lot of awards, films after films after films. And that's how you build a reputation. And but... that was a choice too for Opal. Um from my uh, from 2018, I started making film only with with black people. So I really put all the cast black because uh, I want to show that we can make film that can work with an all black cast. It's possible. It's not uh, because I was hearing over and over, oh, black people don't sell, black people don't sell. Yes, it's sell, <laughs> it's sell. And uh, I wanted to prove that. And um, well, I didn't expect it would have this success. I'm really happy and I'm going to continue because that's, <laughs> and. Uh, so where can the audience see Opa? Is it screening sometime soon? Uh, actually it's in festival, it's still in festival. Uh, I'm I'm still in negotiation uh, to see if it can get distribution. I, I believe that in 2024 
uh, the distribution, the proper distribution in VOD and stuff like that are, are going to start. Uh, but for now, still negotiation because the industry is, I, I'm, I won't say it's chaotic right now. <laughs> it's, uh, mm. it's complicated to, to, to speak because when you, you can meet sales agents, but the people who really have the power to, to buy the film and give it the best distribution, they're generally going to be this person that knows this person that knows this person. And generally they are, they are in companies and in, in specific companies that are that, that, that have their own agenda and that are, that are mm -hmm. really, uh, the economic landscape is affecting them. So mm -hmm. uh, when there is something happening, um, for example, uh, when uh, Netflix started to, to, to um, when they realized that, that um, um, the VOD was not the, the paradise that they imagined, <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, VOD distributors started to, to, to stop buying films. So that is affecting, uh, when, when you start to sell, that affects you. And there is a lot of things like that. Um, so I, I, I'm hopeful that uh, by the end of this year, I will have a, a more, a more um, viable uh, view of what is going to happen. Uh, but for sure in 2024, yes, we, we are going to, to go to but that's a good a good way to to move to my question, my next question. Um, that was about the future of Caribbean cinema because Alain is giving us the example of how hard it is to get your film distributed, even with all the awards to get in the festival. And my question to you, Alain, is to you what what's the future for Caribbean cinema? now in 2023 i i'm not sure because there are so many changes right now uh what i know is that um from 2008 uh there is one thing that uh, when i estimate what was possible or not i really saw that if i had to make the film by myself because initially that i didn't want to do it alone but I told myself, if I have to do it alone, I have to I have to learn code in order to create plugins that are going to accelerate me, and that is, that that is what I've been doing, and it really accelerates me because um, the first my first success was to to turn a six hour process into five seconds. So uh, that alone. Okay, what 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 is that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a step in animation that is called uh, rigging. And that is, um, uh, that is about the, the character. It's like a statue. It doesn't move. And you are going to put a virtual skeleton in the character for this character to move. This step is going, the, but the, the, the skeleton is going to obey the, the human anatomy and you need to know uh, the rotation value of every bones and how it's move. And uh, so that takes time that uh, every character is going to take between five and 10 hours to, to get a character completely done and ready to move. Uh, and um, so my first script, my first plugin was to, to, to try to make the computer do that for me and uh, it took uh, five seconds so i've been uh, accelerated this way and uh, so i try to do that for everything and now when when i started it it would take me five years to make a feature film right now i succeeded to code enough tools to 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 do that in one year so uh what i believe is going to happen uh because my tools are tools they're not ai but the thing is that what we see today is ai um and i feel that the industry is going to to try to build up a set of tools around them with ai to go faster 
faster mm. means that they are going to make more products and uh, more more films and they're going to dare a little bit more going into territories that they were scared to go for financial reason so we may see more more films in the future and at the same time we may see films that are more daring that are going to explore some themes that we've never seen before as in like magical time, realism or something what kind of things yes, are we yes, talking about yes i think that we we are going to see that uh at the same time uh i feel that this is going to be the first contact with uh, bringing ai in the in 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 the tool set uh but later yes it's going to i'm pretty i'm pretty sure that we are facing a massive um a massive blow with ai and that uh, a lot of people are going to lose their job i really believe that in 2040 because netflix is working on that they want to go to user-generated films. So you want to see a film on Netflix, you want to see a film with Denzel Washington in Asia doing whatever you want, and you just say that, you prompt, and it's, a, it's going to generate the film for you, and you just have to watch it. And they're working on that. They're not going to succeed right now, but I'm pretty sure that with, in, with, with persistence, they're going to get there, and they're going to damage the industry a lot. What are we going to do? I don't know. We all we are already in strike. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know what is going to happen. But I believe that for a while in in the in the Caribbean, there's going to be a little um not a golden era, but there's going to be more, more and more uh um more and more um um films and more experimentations. Uh, so that that's what I do. That what that's what I see for the future. Uh, the automat automatization of things are going to allow budgets to go down and to make better content with a lower cost. So I believe that um, people in the Caribbean are going to to be able to reach to 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 create bigger story. Uh, than before, maybe that um, that's gonna that's gonna go that that's gonna take the direction of uh, creating series, because uh, if series are faster to be done, maybe we're going to see something that is uh, going to this direction. Um, so that that's what I that's what I can see for for now. But what mm -hmm. would what should be done? I believe that one of the best model is uh, Nollywood. I believe that mm. the Caribbean should really take the, the Nollywood road, and because Nollywood, they they really they really came from nowhere. They they, they really had an industry uh, that was not existing even in in the the, the the theaters. There were no 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 cinema anymore, and from there they decide to to focus on quantity of a quality for a while and then they up the quality more and more and they completely flooded the industry we can do but that in their model wasn't their model <laughs> privately funded right individual private funding investors as opposed to counting on a government organization today yes but in the beginning no it was more passion in 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 the beginning in um the the beginning of the 2000, it was much more passion. They, they were really doing their thing. And uh, it was, okay, the quality was not there, but the story was 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 there. And uh, um, the Nigerian decided to excuse the quality to, to, to embrace this new, this, this new style. And um, today, it, we have quality content, and uh, we have uh, this, this picture that that rival Hollywood. Um, but we that is something that we can do. That is a model that is really interesting. And uh, the Caribbean, the Cali Wood, or I don't know how they're going to to call it, but that that can that that is um, that can be a reality. 
because we all the island produce films uh we have uh, we have uh, um we are separated, but we 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 share the same type of pain, the same type of history, and uh, we connect with each other. It's not complicated when we go from one island to the other to connect really f fast with the people that we meet. Uh, once the lang once um, the language is not a problem, we really connect culturally really fast. Some things that we don't do in in North America or or Europe. Um, so yes, there's a lot of potential. And um, uh, there's already the, the, the two places that I see, the two or three places, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that really driving uh, Trinidad, Jamaica, and Barbados for now, uh, 82 and uh, Martin, um, Guadeloupe, then Martinique, uh, then Guyane. I, I think that well, some 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 something big can happen can 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 take shape from uh, from from there, but the, um, the the intention, the desire need to be there. So the, the we need to have more people making film, wanting to make films, and wanting to create something new because whatever we do in the Caribbean is going to be new compared to the mainstream. Uh, so we have this capacity to bring the novelty that um, mainstream is actually lacking and complaining mm -hmm. that they are lacking. So are they going to do it? We can see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I love how, you know, you're creating against all odds by being innovative by considering a, a more world view in terms of who your audience is and by constantly focusing on the future and the potential for the entire Caribbean film industry. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Maela, would you like to share a few final words? My dream is to get to watch a lot of Caribbean films in regardless of the language. And earlier when we were talking about distribution, and I think it's something also we've talked about already, how the the way the Caribbean is set up different countries means that we have to develop tools, we have to develop strategies to connect. So more platforms to watch our films because Alan did say that if Nollywood uh, got to, to, I mean, they got to develop their films in Nigeria, it's because the audience was there. The audience was supporting and that's what we need to do also with Caribbean cinema. I mean, Caribbean art in general, but People need to watch Caribbean films. Watch yeah. the Caribbean films. And I'm I'm just going to say one thing. Um, the the dubbing process is really. Um, I think that that is going to be a weapon that is going to be really important for the Caribbean because if our film uh, are um, uh, if our film are in 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 English, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and and, and French, um, but much more English, Spanish, and Portuguese. The reach is really uh, as important as North America because uh, mm. in in um, for example in Brazil, um, the Brazilian culture because they are Portuguese, they're really isolated from the rest of the world. But it's um, the second biggest black community in the entire world, and uh, a lot of part in Brazil, they're really not distinguishable from the Caribbean. They really, if you wake up there, you don't know where you are. <laughs> you will think that you are in the Caribbean. Uh, it doesn't sound like the Brazil that they show on TV. 
so there is a, 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 mar um, a market potential that, that is really huge. Uh, and uh, most of uh, Central, Central America, uh, the, the, um, the black community in every country is really active with the cinema. So there's maybe interesting things uh, in this regard. Um, I, I feel like uh, may, maybe I may be wrong, but I feel like um, the, the, the Latin countries, uh, they, they're really more open than the white countries uh, for our kind of cinema. So, uh, but the problem is dubbing. And why, why do I mention dubbing? Is because what I notice is that pe a lot of people are not going to make the effort to read subtitles. And uh, ah. for festival, it's good because we are between cinema lovers. But uh, once it's going to the audience, to to mainstream, to mainstream audience, they really want us to make a step towards them. We we'll bring them some things that they are going to un understand without reading. So if we do this, I believe that our reach is going to be uh, strong. And, Thank uh, you. That's I, I can help also. That's where uh, AI can help also. That's where. Oh really? AI, AI, AI does help. dubbing. But, no, but it can help creating the voices. I mean, at some point, it can help creating the voices. But since. But then uh, that will take a job we, away from an actor. Exactly. That's that's. That's yeah. a tricky you, stuff. You <laughs> really tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a tricky thing. Uh, yeah. It's interesting to it's interesting to use human for one reason is that um, um, generally uh, that that's that's what I that that what I saw. Actors who are not known, they are more passionate to really push, and they're going to to be. Um, they're not going to to because the actors that are already established they have an agent and uh, they, they they have some 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 stuff that they have to do that sometimes doesn't correspond to what the independent industry is offering to them and because of that um sometime not having a name is opening more possibilities and um, so there is this. And the second thing is that there is a lot of people who are not actors, and, but they have the talent, they have the voice, but we don't know. We, 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 we don't know. And if we use AI, we, 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 we're not going to even give a chance to those new talents to emerge. Um, so that is... Um, and if I'm in favor of AI voices, but I'm in favor of a system like the books, you know, when I give my voice to the AI, but every time you use it, you give me money. And this is going to create a system money. where the person can give their voice once and receive money over and over and over. Yeah. It's really challenging to be speaking both from the actor and the producer hat because I understand the needs for the producer to save money and especially the indie producers but the reality is we are life and people are watching stories about life and honestly mimicking life I don't really know if that's art right so mimicking someone's intonations and saying that that's a human as opposed to giving a moment to a human finding their source within themselves to realize a moment in the scene even if it's dubbing that that the that's the the the, the argument at play that that's the debate are we are we going to be focused on the bottom line are we going to be focused on the craft yeah um there's, so, always, there's always going to be something missing yeah. Because of the nature of the computer. The, the computer was designed to perfect. And we are designed to 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 humanize. So it's two processes that are that are oppo uh, that, that are um opposed. And um 
it's it's going to be difficult because even in in my in my industry um we spend when we animate uh 3d characters we spend our time fighting the computer because the computer wants to make it perfect all the time we spend our days <laughs> fighting the computers and putting this this human element um so the computer itself it's not working to be human so maybe that's going yeah. to save a lot of job for yeah. at least for the years to come i i hope and the question remains who knows <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ella and Lamayala, for joining me today. This has been amazing. And I, I, I feel like I don't want to end this conversation. We could talk forever and ever, but we're not going to. I'm not going to do that to you. But thank you for joining for our August 2023 CSP Artist Chat. And um, as you know, Conchell Productions, we have Conchell International Film Festival and be on the lookout for our notifications about our 2024 submission requests because we are going to continue making a space for the Caribbean and Caribbean diaspora voice. I want you to follow Mayela on her Kaukaama podcast. Go to at Kaukaama and also follow Alain Bidal so that you can know when there's going to be a screening of Opal. You have to see this film and follow him at at Alain Bidal. And don't forget to follow us so that you can be reminded the next time we have an online event. And we're also going to be having our September event, which is a writer's workshop. And it's going to be September 22nd, September, September 23rd. Go to our website, conchelproductions.com to register. There, there's the observer and there's a participant fee. Choose which one works for you and get ready to be the success that you can be. And thank you all for attending this month's Artist Chat. Be well. See you next month. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>